gardening during a heat wave or extreme heat and humidity isn't the best idea. In fact, it can be the worst idea if you end up with any heat stress, heat illness, or God forbid heat stroke. This channel is all about garden sanity. And so today I'm here with 24 tips to keep you cool and smart before, during, and after gardening in extreme heat. As gardeners during a heat wave, we wanna take care of ourselves first, the garden second, always. I'm Laura from Garden Sanity, and I don't want you to get overwhelmed when it gets this hot out, and especially with the horrible humidity, which leads to bad air quality. I want you to enjoy gardening, that's my goal. So remember, short of a tree falling over during a heat wave, <laughs> there's really nothing that's a garden emergency. I know we all have to water, I get it, I totally get that. But if your garden isn't looking the best right now, it's okay. We're gonna have more than enough time when it gets a little bit cooler to get out there and do what we love best. And with that, that leads to my very first tip. Stay inside and don't garden. Seriously, when the weather's bad and the air quality is awful, it does you no good to be outdoors at all. Remember, there's always tomorrow or the next day or the day after that and so on. Heat stress, heat exhaustion and heat stroke are all serious health issues, which you and I need to avoid. If you must garden, then pay attention to the following tips. A good way to determine if it's safe to garden outside, which I found on the Farmer's Almanac website, is to add the temperature and humidity figures together. If they total more than 160, then it's time to stay inside. So, for example, last week, when I was filming my video on how to deadhead Veronica, it was only 74 degrees outside, but the humidity was at 97%. My math says that that totals 171. I didn't do anything else that day outdoors after I was done deadheading and filming in the early morning. But it wasn't easy. I'm a gardener like you. Gardening's my happy place. It's my sanctuary. That's where I want to be. So if, and it's a big if, you need to be out in the garden, I'm going to show you ways to prepare. And that includes watering because even hand watering can take a toll on us while we're standing out in the sun. Clothing. Wear light-colored clothing, as dark colors absorb heat rather than reflect it. Also, wear lightweight, breathable clothing whenever possible, and make sure it's loose-fitting. Cotton and linen are really good choices. Some gardeners swear by long sleeves and pants. You want fabrics that keep the air flowing and don't trap heat next to your skin. Clothing with built-in UV sun protection is also a great option. Wear supportive sneakers or excellent arch support sandals. This isn't the time for flip-flops. <laughs> You've got to support your feet, and this way, your feet and legs won't get as tired so quickly in the heat. Wear sunscreen or sunblock. Enough said. A hat is also a good idea, although for me, hats just make me hotter. Again, clothing with sun protection, also a smart idea. Water. For you, not your plants. Drink lots of water, more than you think you need and before you make your way outside. And when outdoors, keep your water bottle in the shade so you're not drinking hot water. I know that sounds kind of obvious, but <laughs> believe me, if you forget, it's not a pleasant taste. If you're outdoors for long periods doing yard work and sweating, consider drinking Gatorade or a similar sports beverage that can replace the salts you're losing by sweating. You want an electrolyte enhanced beverage. Stay away from energy drinks, they aren't the same thing. Also stay away from heavy meals before gardening, as well as caffeine and alcohol, which don't do you any favors in extreme heat. Water is your best friend. Have a towel handy to remove sweat. This is a great idea to help avoid sunscreen getting into your eyes. Just pat your face and remember, sweat is a way to cool your body off. I use basic fluffy bath towels that feel soft on my face. Some gardeners will use a wet bandana or a wet cotton dish towel around their neck to keep cool. There's also cooling towels on the market. However, Consumer Reports tested several of them and found they don't provide much more cooling ability than a regular wet towel does, so save your money. Consider using a fan. Although there's many portable ones being sold these days, nothing beats a big standard box fan that plugs into an outlet for maximum relief. Use an extension cord to run it where you're working or set it up in your open garage where you can take a break for a while from the heat. If you must be outdoors, Restrict your gardening time to 10 minutes at the most in one session. This is what I do. You'll be surprised what you can accomplish in 10 minutes, even in five minutes. 
No, I get it, you can't weed your entire garden, but if you must pull some weeds, just do a small section and return indoors. And if you don't currently use some form of mulch in your garden beds, please consider adding it for next year as it really cuts down on weeding and it helps retain moisture in the soil so plants don't dry out as much. Thus, you don't have to water as much. Take frequent breaks. Again, use that 10 minute suggestion. This is where a garden kneeler bench comes in handy and I swear by mine. You can kneel on it one minute, turn it over, and it's a bench. Sit in the shade or go back inside your house if you can during those breaks. Those breaks should be at least 10 minutes in length, at least. During those breaks, drink water and assess how you're feeling. How's the air quality? Is it hard to breathe? Are you drenched in sweat? It might be time to call it a day. Take care of you. Remember, your garden comes second to your health. Now I wanna talk about gardening tasks or chores. What can wait and what do you need to do? Transplanting plants? That's a big no. Don't dig up any plants right now to transplant them elsewhere. They're much better staying where they are right now. Planting plants? Well, that's iffy. If you must, make it early morning or on a cloudy day for the best results. Otherwise, it is much smarter to wait for cooler temperatures so the plants don't suffer any transplant shock. Remember, fall is a fantastic time for planting and transplanting. Pruning? No way. It's way too much stress on the plants. Wait to do any pruning until the fall if necessary. So here's a winter gem box wood I recently pruned. You can see the brown on the tops of the plant and that is because of heat stress. I pruned it last month because I got frustrated I couldn't see the little quick fire hydrangeas behind it from the kitchen window. <laughs> I know that was totally on me. But now I've got all these little brown dead things. It's not gonna ruin the plant but you can see it's a good example of plants not being happy when they're pruned in the heat and humidity. Wait till the fall. Deadheading? Yes. You can deadhead, but make sure it's early in the morning or at dusk, two times when it's not gonna be as hot and humid outside, hopefully. Last week when I did my video on how to deadhead Veronica, it was only seven in the morning, but the humidity was already at 97% which was crazy. And in fact, in that video I mentioned, it actually started raining, that's how high the humidity was. But the minute I was finished, I went inside. It was a quick deadheading project and I was done in about 10 or 15 minutes. So, you can deadhead, just do it in short spurts. I deadhead my knockout and drift roses regularly and I do that around dinner time. But I haven't done them in about a week and here's the knockout roses, how they look right now. They're covered in blooms, but <laughs> there's also some deadheading that's gonna need to be done. So I'm gonna have quite a job to do when the weather cools down. For example, last night around dinner time, it was still 98 degrees. The air was thick, it was humid, no way was I going out there. Deadheading is relaxing to me, it's almost therapeutic, but not in extreme heat and humidity. I'll break up the deadheading over a few days once it's cooled off a bit, and I'll still enjoy blooms coming back onto the shrubs, so no worries. Weeding? Yes and no. Weeds seem to thrive during hot and humid weather. <laughs> Actually, weeds seem to thrive no matter what. During heat waves, my opinion is that weeding isn't urgent until the weather, especially the air quality, is better. What do I do? I'll wait until the heat wave passes, or I'll set a time limit like I mentioned earlier. 10 minutes of weeding and that's it for the entire day. The two times I prefer are very early in the morning or around dinner time. Watering plants? Yes, we all need to do it. And I can't give you specific watering instructions as to how often and how much, because every single garden is different and depends on so many factors. Watering your own gardens and determining what they need takes some time, so please don't get frustrated if you're doing your best and the plants still seem stressed. Notice what I just said, you're doing your best. Please always remember that especially when you start to get overwhelmed, it's super important. I mean, put it on a post-it and stick it right inside the door when you're coming inside so you can remind yourself, you are doing your best. The weather, not so much. You wanna be proactive with watering. Don't wait for plants to begin wilting before you grab the watering can, as wilting stresses the plants and will make it that much harder to keep your plants healthy. And please remember this super important point. Plants benefit when they are watered deeply a few times a week versus watered a little bit every day. Watering deeply helps the plant roots work their way down into the soil, 
where moisture remains longer than near the soil surface. Shallow watering, meaning watering just a little bit, gives the roots an excuse to stay near the soil surface, meaning they're gonna dry out much more quickly. Newer plants, shrubs, and trees will need much more water than your established plants. So if you're a newer gardener or you've planted a newer garden bed, please don't get frustrated with the amount of watering your new garden needs because in a few years, many of these plants will have become more acclimated and won't need nearly as much water from you. For example, this row of emerald green arborvitaes, the first year we planted it, way back when, that summer, oh my goodness, we had to water it almost every single day. They were brown, it was really frustrating. The past, oh, I don't know, maybe almost 10 years, we haven't had to touch these. Even during these heat waves, they're fine. Another tip, using soaker hoses or sprinklers helps remove you from being out in the heat. This year, we've had to run soaker hoses around the wall of dappled willow, and it's been really frustrating, but that's how dry it's been. So we've added a soaker hose, and that seems to help, and it also beats hand watering these, because again, dappled willow love water, so you especially need to water them deeply. As for hand watering, I water early in the morning, right when I wake up. During heat waves especially, early morning watering provides the plants with the best chance of absorbing all that water before the hot sun bakes everything. The next best time is around dusk, when the plants will still have a chance for any water on their leaves to evaporate. You don't want the water sitting on the leaves overnight because that can lead to fungus, disease, black spot, etc. When you're watering, water as close to the soil surface as possible. Also a helpful tip, and this may sound crazy, but when hand watering, if your hose is in sunlight during the day, let the hose run for a minute to get all the hot water out. I actually didn't always know this important tip and was amazed at how hot the initial water can be at first. Plants don't like hot water. For hanging baskets, which dry out easily as it is, during heat waves, consider grouping them all together down on the ground to make watering easier and quicker for you, or move them to a shadier spot so they don't dry out as quickly in between watering. And the same goes for all of your potted plants. Move them to the shade, put them in a grouping. It makes watering that much easier for you and quicker as well. And here's tips for after gardening. When you first come inside, use a towel to dab away as much of the sweat as possible. To help your body temperature gradually lower, run cold water over your wrists. This is an amazingly handy tip because it works. If you want faster relief, use gel ice packs on your pulse points such as wrists, temples, and also on the back of the neck, which will help cool you off quickly. I actually use gel ice packs frequently, and I'll link to the description area below on the ones I use. I seem to generate the most heat from the back of my neck, so quite often, that's where one of these ice packs can help. Take a cool shower. Put on dry, comfy, loose-fitting clothing. Continue to drink water, and if you can literally put your feet up, do so. It'll help reduce any swelling that you might have in your legs and feet. And finally, Assess how you're feeling. Do you have any signs of heat stress, heat illness? Really rest and take care of you. You already did a lot outside. Even if you feel like it was 10 minutes and wasn't much, that's a lot in this weather. Be smart and be safe. I hope these tips help you like they help me. Until next time, happy gardening.